You know, that's what the thought of Jesus coming back and the, the salvage part, he rescued us. I needed rescuing. You know, I mean, I know he did it. He did it. Uh, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know he did it 2,000 years ago, but then it's up for us to walk in faith and receive that that he came to give us. And he, it's rescue. And I, I cried out in my deepest despair at the age of 30 or 31. I thought life would never get any better, could get, not get any better. But in a last ditch effort, I just hit my knees and said, God, if you're real. And that's from the heart, that thing Jesus is always talking about. I meant it. And he meant it. He was just waiting on us to get serious with him. He's always there. Yes, it's always, don't ever look to God when things go bad. You know, first of all, he ain't the thief. He's not the, he's not the liar. He's not the one that, that kills. He's the giver of life. But it's, if usually when it comes to things that we should receive from God, fingers should always point to us. Amen. Amen. Are y'all here this morning? Yes. Come on, Mr. Thing, work for me now. I don't know why it's not letting me in. Ta-da. Is Charlie and Gloria here? I don't think they are. I saw this morning that Gloria had lost a cousin, I guess, yesterday, and it was an unexpected death. And I, I imagine that's where they are. I was on Charlie's birthday, I think, was Thursday. We were going, I was going to pick on her a little bit. Charlie's getting younger than me. <laughs> that didn't make no sense, did it? Did y'all have an anniversary yesterday? Looking at you two. Yeah. When was y'all's anniversary? I misread it then. I thought y'all had a anniversary. Celebrating they celebrated it. So they've been celebrating since August. <laughs> That's, I got you. Let me tell you, I, I meant to bring this up last week. Wendy, they have Tommy Max, which is just a phenomenal place. If you've never been there, go there. It's Lancaster Village. It's just an awesome little store. But she brought us some um, cream cheese banana bread, but pumpkin, cream cheese pumpkin bread. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm telling you, we about had a knockdown drag out over the last <laughs> bite of it. We, she gave us, it was a little loaf of it, a little, little bitty loaf. And we, I tried a bite, I went back and then there was just one bite left between us. That thing was, was phenomenal. They have all sorts of interesting stuff. I'm telling you. Dolly Padalevo, I hope you're watching right now. They watch us from um, Brunswick. And I very seldom go on YouTube and see comments or anything like that. And I see what she's been, Dolly's been, been saying real nice things on YouTube. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, thank you all for your kind words and for supporting LCCI. And, and looking at that, I got a message from, I think it's Russia. I hit the translation button and they were just thanking us for doing it, telling us to keep on doing what we're doing. But I think it was in Russian. I mean, it had, you know, letters with lines through it and stuff like that, which I don't think I learned when I went to school here. <laughs> I'm not sure that's what that is. Now, y'all just keeping us good. James and Christy dropped some eggplants by the house. We did some eggplant parmesan. Good eggplants. Y'all ready for whatever we're going to do? Father, in Jesus' name, I give this time to you completely, as I hopefully do all of my life, Lord. But I ask for you to move in this situation, Father. Move amongst us. Let your spirit hover. And, Father, take this chaos that I spew out and turn it into order, Father. Let us learn that that you would have us to know this day, I ask in Jesus' precious name. And the church said, Amen. this little simple thing I saw the other day, I don't know, even know who said it, but he said the nature of deception is you don't know you are deceived. And that's true. If you knew you were deceived, you'd get yourself out of it. But you see people that, that live for decades under deception and keep living that way. I did. 
For the longest time, I was deceived by the enemy that I could not stop the things I was doing and my life was over with. That's deception, believing that I was, oh, I know they could fix themselves. They could get help from God and all those things, but I was the exception. We always see ourselves as exceptions to the rule. I was that exceptional case that could, was uncurable. You know, God can fix anything, y'all. But the nature of all deception is you don't know that you're deceived. And I'm always quoting Mark Twain on this. He says, um, it's easier to fool the people than it is to convince the people that they have been fooled. That is so true. I'm talking today a little bit about several things within this, but um, about protecting ourselves against deception. Is there anything we can do? Paul, in writing to the church of, at Galatia, Galatia, it was a lot of churches over what is now present-day Turkey, and it was not just a church at Galatia, it was the churches. And they had, Paul understood the grace of God. He understood the absolute, all things are legal, Paul said, twice. All things, not all things are good for us, but all things are lawful. You can't break, if, if you can't get arrested for breaking the law, there ain't no law to break. You understand? So no matter how bad we live our lives, grace outdoes that. Where sin abounded, how much more so did grace abound? We have a new mercy every morning. Amen. And Paul understood those things, and he taught them to the churches. And he would get out of there, and man gets involved right away and see there's something we must be doing. And those Jewish people who were finally set free from the law went right back in, maybe just doing two or three things, maybe just circumcising the children, or maybe just keeping the Sabbath or whatever it was, but the Bible teaches us if you're going to depend on your relationship with God according to what you do, you can't just do and pick and choose. You've got to do all 700 and plus laws if that's the way you're going to live. But Jesus has a better way. He gave us his right standing with the Father, his righteousness. He who knew no sin became sin. And he gave us his position with God, his righteousness. It was imputed to us. It's not our do, it is our who. You get it? It's who we are. He, he was writing to them. They had gotten right back off of it. I mean, the paint ain't dried on the church building, and they were already going back into what they'd just been delivered out of. And Paul says, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? What a strong term to use. That word means to cast a spell or to fascinate or to draw you away by seduction. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Talking about what he'd been talking. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth. They were there. They saw these things. Crucified among you. Whenever ta Paul talks about the crucifixion, he is getting to the resurrection. Just like he did at Areopagus. He speaks the resurrection. The resurrection of the dead. Not just the resurrection of Jesus, but the resurrection of all of us. Who has bewitched you? Who has fascinated you? Who has pulled you away from the truth? Who it was obvious right before you. And then he says, this only what I learned of you. He says, let me ask you this one thing. Did you receive the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, by the works of the law, by doing this and not doing that, by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? I received it by hearing. I didn't know there'd be any Holy Spirit, just like the guy in Acts said. And the Holy Spirit snuck up on me one night when I wasn't expecting it. And my life's been different ever since. And I hope those things are happening with you all too. This I want to know. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? By the hearing of faith, of course. Why are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, God got you off the ground to a good start, off and running, with His Spirit dwelling in you. Wow, you're now going to be made perfect by the flesh, by what you do. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if be, it be yet in vain? He, 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 therefore, that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, the ones that you know who are walking with God, do they do it by the works of the law, by keeping rules and regulations, or by the hearing of faith? Faith comes by hearing. Hmm? Even as Abraham believed God, that's all we're asked to do is believe God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. 
For right, this, the easiest way to think of righteousness is we're in right standing with the Father. Everything's taken care of that makes us to be able to have perfect com, com, communion with each other, not with Him. And in Galatians, on down later in Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6, Paul says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. We are free. We're not under rules and regulations. But Stan, if you go and tell folks that, they'll go out and do whatever they want to do. They're already doing whatever they want to do. The, prob- the thing is, when you take the allure of forbidden fruit away from your face, it's not, you're not drawn there. Yeah. It, when, when it's, it's not a, you can't do that anymore. The attraction is not there. But that's not what the follower of Jesus is looking to do. Not trying to figure out how he can go out and sin and get away with it and still be in good graces with God, which you can do. The the believer in God is wanting to grow up in the things of God and become the man that God would have them to be or a woman that God would have them to be. And that would be living a life that is free from the things that cause us not to win which is what sin is. The wages of sin is death. Sin, the Greek word hamartano, that's sort of one pronunciation of it, means to, to, it's an archery expression. It's like you're shooting at a bow and arrow and it falls short of the target. It falls short and so as not to share in the prize. That's what it means. That that God intends for you to get because of something you're doing is keeping you from doing it. It's not because God's not wanting you to have it. It's your energy set forth. Now, it's not by works. It's going to be by the Spirit always. But there still are spiritual principles that you must apply. You can't get over, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can't talk any way you want to and have the things of God to come to pass in your life. Pretty easy thing to sow words, isn't it? And you're doing it 24-7 whether you know it or not. Verse 2 says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, this is not talking about the act of circumcision which was done to the Jewish child on day eight. And I'm going to have to have a word with God about that one. It, it fell over into um, Islam and into Christianity also. But you know the rest of the world only 5% are circumcised. But it is, it is what you're doing when you're beginning to keep the law. So he's talking about getting back into the law. Paul says if you be circumcised Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he's talking about doing it not because, I, I didn't have much to say about it. You know what I'm saying? I was a baby. I wish I had something to say about it. Put your hands in your pocket and get out of here, doctor. <laughs> Paul, I say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, he is a debtor to do the whole law. If you're doing anything because you, if even the top ten, the Ten Commandments, If you're doing them in order to keep them in the eyes of God, it puts you automatically on the rest of them, all 700 and something. Do you understand that? Well, that throws some people, and I say that about the Ten Commandments. You know, we want the Ten Commandments put in the courthouses, in the schools. We've been delivered from the curse of the law, y'all. We have been delivered from it. What the the law does, the Bible says, now a lot of folks don't know this, and if I had the scripture in mind, I could tell you about it. The Bible says the law was given so that sin would abound. Do you know that? Well, that you tell a bunch of people, don't, and they're going to do. That's the way we are. I always talk about it. Take a child, three years old, put him in a room, knock yourself out with all these toys, but don't go over to that box in the corner. Leave the room, and the whole room run into that box. That's all I did was open up boxes all my life that I wasn't supposed to. If I wasn't supposed to do it, that's where I wanted to go. Amen. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, he is a debtor to do the whole lot. And Christ is become of no effect unto you. Wow. In other words, his visit to earth in your behalf was just unfruitful. It didn't matter. And he doesn't say Jesus. He says Christ which is talking about the anointing, the power of God on man to change the things that man can't change unless he has that miracle working power. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified or made righteous by doing the law, look at here, it says you 
are fallen from grace. Every time, let me tell you how the devil's twisted that one. You know how he has. We hear it on the news every time a preacher gets caught with a secretary, every time something happens to a holy man or then he gets arrested for this, that, and other sexual crime. They will always say, he fell from grace. If he's got any sense, he fell right into grace. That's when you need grace is when you mess up. But you do fall right into it. You don't fall from it. You can't fall from God's grace. You can't run from the grace of God if you try to. You can't out sin the grace of God. And I know very, I know people think you give them license. That it's not what happens. That's not the way we are. The stuff that we deal with and try to get a hand, our hands on, a grip on, and get out of our lives. When you start living this way for God. You don't think about them. They don't have a pull on you. And you look around one day and they're gone. You don't remember working with them. You don't rem- I don't remember when my desire to drink left me. It just left. I don't know when my desire to smoke tobacco. And I had it bad. I'm talking about that's the biggest addiction I've ever had was tobacco. But I remember one day, you know what? I hadn't thought about smoking in several days. What happened? I'm, I'm not working at it. I'm just doing what I know to do, and God's taking care of everything. Amen. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith. And here's the key, which works by love. Love and forgiveness are synonymous. You cannot love and not be totally forgiving. They work together. Forgiveness and love is the same thing. We love somebody because we hold nothing against them. We hold something against them because we don't love them. You know, you understand? That makes sense. Did I say anything in it? Makes sense. Okay. Do you know? Y'all make some noise in here. Let me hear a hallelujah. hallelujah. That was good. That really was good. Every one of us, I don't want to hurt your feelings, are bewitched, are deceived all the time. The, remember, the nature of deception is you don't know that you're deceived. Every one of us, including me, has areas in my life that I believe are true, but I'm really heading down the exact opposite way. There are things like that in all of our lives. The, the nature of deception, not, not knowing that you're deceived, as you see the light, as, as the blinders begin to come off and you begin to see the truth about where the deception was, it, it's like it suddenly takes off very hurry, that it falls like dominoes, and the scales are sort of changed in the other direction, whereas you had a lot of things that you believed to be true that were false, as you begin to see them, and they start happening like that. It begins to go the other way, and suddenly you're walking more in truth than you are in deception. Deception's going to always be here. The enemy, as long as the enemy is, because that's the way he works, by telling us lies. He lies and gets us to respond to the lies, and that's never going to be good for us. If we will respond only to the truth, we will have a good life. Amen? Amen. If there was no deception, we would not need to have church. If there was no deception, we wouldn't need the Bible. We wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. Why did Jesus say he was sending the Holy Spirit to us? To guide us into all truth. So it wasn't automatic. We had to be led or or guided into all truth. He says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'm free in about 80% of myself. I still got bondage, but nothing like I used to. Good gracious. I consider myself the most free man I know. And Susie also, she's right along there with me. We, we don't allow condemnation to come in. We, we live our lives the best we can, and we seem to be in our eyes and to ourselves where we have to do self-evaluation, and you better be doing the same. You better start looking in the mirror once in a while and seeing where you are. We see ourselves as growing into the image of God more and more every year. And the way you can tell you are is, is you look back six months, 
And then go back another six months and you'll see that you really are moving in, in leaps and bounds among what you used to be, which was just staying the same all the time. You might have a religious experience, but what God wasn't doing a whole bunch. Why? Because there were things that you were doing that you thought you had to do in order to please God. And, the, and Jesus just said, Paul just said, that makes the Christ of non effect in your life when you're trying to earn the things from God. Earning from God and following his principles are two different things. Okay? I saw this the other day on Facebook and it just grabbed me. It was right where I was thinking about something. And the person said, once you realize that everything the government and their media propaganda tells you is a lie, you finally are able to see the truth. The lie must be revealed in order for truth to come in. You've got to be willing to make adjustments, which is what repentance is all about, changing your mind. Let's look at the beginning of deception on mankind, the, 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 the history that we, we have of it from the book of Genesis. Remember, Satan is, was a murderer from the beginning. He was the father of lies, the father of lies. Everything produces after its kind. And he has reproduced through earth, through people on the earth, over and over again. Um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. God says, now the serpent, it's, the Hebrew word is a snake by its hiss is the way it's, it's described in, in um, one of the concordances, Strong's concordance. Serpent, serpent, hiss is what it's getting at. And it's, it's a reptile by nature, of course. Now, the serpent was more subtle. That word subtle means cunning and crafty, but usually in a bad way. Cunning and crafty. Remember who has bewitched you, who has seduced you? He's cunning and crafty, usually in a bad sense. And it also means prudent. When someone is prudent, it means they can see how their actions are going to weigh down the line. It's like looking into the future. When you're prudent about something, you make good plans for what might occur, either good or bad, and how you're going to face it off if it goes good or bad. You're looking like into the future if you're prudent about something. In a business plan, you want to figure out, well, what are you going to do if you have a bad year? Well, you've got this to let fall back on. That's being prudent. And the enemy is. He's very patient. He's crafty. And he's much more patient than we are at all. And he can wait decades, if not centuries, to have things happen negatively in our lives. You understand that? Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Has God said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Well, we know that God said that, right? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said, Oh, you shall not surely die. He's twisting it. When they ate, they didn't drop dead. But the Bible says that's when death entered in. Death entered in in the garden. That's when all the trouble began. The troublemaker, Satan, Lucifer, was given license. That's when the lease was subbed out to him. Mark, book of, the Gospel of Mark talks about. At that point, when Eve and Adam, when Adam saw that it was a good-looking fruit, and Eve said it was good, and he ate it, at that point, they subleased the earth over to Satan, or Lucifer. That's talked about in Mark chapter 12 or 13, maybe Mark 13. It's like ignored by Christianity, but it's fascinating to me. And it talks about, Jesus is explaining, God is explaining how the, how the earth, Everything operates, and he says, and he's giving the parable of a man who had a, a farm, and he said, he, and talking about God, and he let the farm out to Massa Lease. He let it out, and that's talking about to us, okay? And we did not do what we were supposed to do. In fact, when God would send somebody to us, we would kill them, or we would shun them, or run them away. I did that the first 30 years of my life. Time, y'all know the story about the guy on the roof in the flood, 
the helicopter goes by and they're oh, God's going to rescue me. God, God I, sent you, I, sent you, I, sent you, I sent you a rowboat and a helicopter and everything else. You and the woman said unto the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the, which is in the midst of the garden, it's God of the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is all of our problems, because it caused us all to get off into judgmentalism in everything that we do. We all know what's good and we all know what's evil. We all think we know what's good and we all think we know what's evil. And it's always us that are good and them that are evil. Us and them gang come from that. For God does know that the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. This is, this is Lucifer talking. God knows when you eat it, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as God's, knowing good and evil. First of all, they were already created in the image of God and His likeness. They were already like Him. They were His children. But something did happen because God says later about them knowing good from evil. So something did happen. There was something that happened when they did that along with the disobedience. And I don't understand it. The Bible says it's a mystery. Some things in the Bible you're just going to have to say, I don't know, Lord, I'll ask you about it one day. Especially when you see things that everybody's got an answer for none of the answers are the same. They don't jive, you know. Then you, that's a mystery. That, that you just trust God with it. And when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree is desired to make one wise, now that's what was added in by the enemy, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and she gave it all to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And the voice of the Lord, he came down and said, where are you? He knew where they were. Y'all know I love to preach on this right here. God showed up. They didn't blow their relationship with God. He showed up same place, same time. And he knew where they were. He wanted to hear what they were going to say, where are you? And he said, well, we hid from him. Why? Because we were afraid. Why were you afraid? Because we were naked. Who told you you were naked? Then I can pull that all the way forward to when Paul says we're in, alienated and enemies in our mind because of wicked works. And the wicked works are the stuff that we think are wicked. I don't know about you, but I was born naked. How can that be evil? How about you? Did you have some clothes on when you came out? It's hard for us to imagine genuine demonic, evil, personally working in people, in us. And, and I think you got two things at work here, and I'm not 100% on, on these things, but I'm pretty close on them, I think. I know I'm close on this one. I know angel can, an angel can, can become in the human body, and I know that one-third of the angels did fall, and I know that people have had personal, personal encounters with people that look like people, but I don't think they were people. You got it? Yes. Now, the Bible tells us we can have an encounter with a godly angel. Does that mean that they lost their power to transform to look? And I don't think so. Because in the Old Testament, we learn that the Son of God, the angels, the fallen angels, all, all um, Theologians agree that's what he's talking about. I haven't heard anybody else say anything different. When he's talking, when the Bible says the sons of God, the fallen angels, that third came down, saw the daughters of men, the good looking women that we have as wives and daughters and everything, desirable. And so they slept with them and then had another race come, a race of giants. Now that's in the Bible. So we know not only can they look like men, but they can also mate and cause offspring to happen. Is that still going on? Something's wrong. I know Lucifer is st he's still God of this world with a little g. And I know the Bible is explicit on this. He's going to kill, steal, and destroy just as fast and furious as he can until this thing winds down. We are in the middle of the wind down, y'all. And I don't want to say that this is what this means according to this scripture, because if it doesn't look like this, we might miss it. You know my thoughts on that. The people of Jesus' day who knew more Bible than we will ever know, they memorized like the books of Psalms. They memorized the whole book of Psalms, y'all. 
They knew these things, but they had a pre assumption of what it was going to look like when Messiah showed up and Jesus was right there in their midst and they did not only didn't recognize him, they killed him. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were, had a part in the crucifixion. It wasn't all of them. You see, that's how dangerous it is to interpret end time events and nailing them out in one way. I think I am seeing what's going on and I believe this is where we are. Are we in the tree? I don't know. I know things are rotten. I know that, I know for some reason the news is not reporting all the wildfires that are going on worldwide. All of the floods that are going on worldwide. Do you know New York's flooding right now? Or was yesterday? All overseas, the tornadoes and storms that are going on worldwide. There's so much tragedy going on right now. But it's not being talked about a lot. That thing in Maui should have been a wake-up call for us, folks. What has this got to do with the Bible? Folks, if the Bible ain't going to help us in our present mess, what good is it? I, why are the preachers not seeing these things and saying, look here, this is where it looks like we are. We got to wake up. But it is hard for us to imagine that we can be having fellowship with somebody who really ain't one of us. I want you to think about the serpent in the garden. Chapter 3 of Genesis. Now the serpent was more subtle, more crafty than all, everything that God ever made. What is a serpent? It is a snake. What is a snake? It's a reptile. What is a reptile? A cold-blooded creature. They're cold-blooded, right? How many times have you heard the expression, someone was killed in cold blood? And we, it means there was ice in their veins. They didn't think twice about it. it didn't, there are people like that. But there are only people like that. You understand? Now, the evil propagates. And there are people that have been, that are, that are just like me and you, who have a soul, and, 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 and God loves them just like he loves us. And they are coerced or moved into or forced into or just influenced into following a life of evil by the evil people that they hang around with. And I believe that rescuing is available for every one of those, but not the other ones. I think the other ones are what hell was designed for, the devil and his angels and the demons. Amen? Amen. Now, these things I'm pretty safe in saying that I believe this is the way it is, and I, I think God would have told me I've been believing it so long, and because of what I do, I, I take correction real easy from God. <clears throat> but you have to be willing to adjust your thoughts about everything in order to see truth. You have to make room for the truth, or you already have something growing in that hole. Yeah. Do you understand? you got to plow up a field before you sow seeds in it. And if you've got a belief about something growing in that area of you, you've got to be willing to pull it out and let another seed go there and see where that takes you. Amen? Amen. That is what repentance is all about. Changing your mind. It's not about stopping doing sin. And I mean, those things happen. And I did. That was, that was my desire was to get alcohol out of my life. And I would, I'd come to the place where I was ready to sew my lips up if that's what it took. But that's all it took was my desire to do whatever it takes. And then God shows up, and the other part just easy. It just falls away, you know. I told you last Sunday that the Great Awakening was not an expression that I came up with. There are literally millions of people in our realm that are experiencing the Great Awakening. They're recognizing it, and that is what they are calling it. But hear me out. Listen to me carefully. Get this if you don't get anything else I say. When you hear Stanley Boy talking about waking up or the great awakening, I ain't talking about wokening. Wake and woke ain't the same thing. Get, say it out loud. Wake and woke, wake and woke. is not the same thing. Not even close. The devil cannot create nary a thing. All he can do is pervert what God has already created. God, wine appears naturally. 
out of the yeast in the air, alcohol will ferment, and it'll get to about 14% alcohol, something like that, and then it will kill off the yeast, and it'll stay at about 14%. When you buy like MD-2020, that's 20% alcohol, that means they have had grain spirits added to it. It's not really wine. You got it? Man, around the year 1200, came up with the idea of, of, of distillation of spirits, taking wine and fermented beverages and boiling them and capturing nothing but the alcohol that comes off of it. And it is straight alcohol, and if you buy something that's 100 proof, that means it's half water and half alcohol. Did you know that? means it's, you have to add water back to it. Man perverts it. God makes the beautiful poppy. The devil gets a hold of it and turns it into heroin. The coca leaves, same thing. It does all of these. It takes whatever God has. It, it, the gifts of the Spirit. My goodness. He just raised hell all through the church in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s by twisting the preciousness of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and had folks fighting and kicking folks out of churches and everything, all he can do is start a new narrative, and he has done that. He's done it with history. He does it by the people that we listen to. He got a hold of the mainstream media back around the 1900s. I told you the other day when John D. Rockefeller bought um, routers, and then routers bought the Associated Press, and then up until television, they, they controlled everything that you heard of that movie tone, movie tone at the movies where you'd see the news, or in the newspaper, or on the radio, and then when television came around, Operation Mockingbird went into effect, and they took it over. They made propaganda legal in 2008, but the government can use the airwaves for propaganda. They'd done away with it in 1948, and they'd put, they said, but they did it anyway. Laws don't mean anything to the government. Have you ever noticed that? They do what they want to do, and they use their laws as weapons against us. We'll find something. That's the attitude so many times of a weaponized government. And it's what we're seeing in the tyrannical mood that is going on right now in this precious home that I grew up in and I love and I'm going to see the, become the land of the free and the home of the brave again. Amen. But wake ain't woke. He can only pervert what God has made. And that's exactly what he did with the movement of God removing the blinders and showing us, just like Jesus talked about in Mark chapter 4, that's what's going on now. Everything is being revealed. So, what does the enemy do? He gets on that movement, and he takes it to extremes, and it costs, I can't go into this today, but I want to so badly, <clears throat> all of the progress and strides that various groups that have been discriminated against that they were making when the woke movement got off the ground, it set them back to the 1950s, every one of them. And I've seen people pick up prejudices in the last three years that they had laid aside years before. That's what they have done. And it's on purpose. It's calculated. They know when they accuse us of these things, it's the very same thing that they are doing and the thoughts and beliefs that they hold. They project their evil onto us, onto God's people. Am I making sense? Yes. We are created in God's image. Always remember that. And his likeness. I like that part of it. We like him. How do we protect ourselves against the enemy and his deception? The scripture you always hear me say, be not deceived, evil communications, corrupt good manners, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. I'm going to go before that one and the one right after it today. And Paul is saying, if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what's he talking about? He's talking about the day, the same thing's going on then that's going on today. The saying is, give the people circus and bread and they will not rebel against the tyranny. You, get, you keep them happy, and that's what they were doing back then. There were coliseums and stadiums all over the Roman Empire, and they would go to see violent acts there for entertainment. Same thing we do in America, y'all. It, if they can get up, if, you, if 
The enemy can get your mind off what's going on and keep you entertained and keep you happy with sugar and beer and, and Hershey bars and Coca-Cola and all that stuff. He's got you. You're satisfied and you will not rebel. Just give me that. Give me a Reese Buttercup, a Pepsi Cola, and give me a football game and I'm okay. And I know people right now, all they're worried about is sports when we are at the climax of a world war and they can't even see it because the circus and bread theory is working. We're all just entertained and taking care. We ain't got time for that. I don't want to hear about that. You have to be willing. God needs his people to stand up. But he needs us to take our hands off of our ears and our eyes. If after the matter of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? If there's nothing, if we just die and we die, let's eat, drink, for tomorrow we die, is what he says. If there's nothing to that, it's all futile. Be not deceived. When Paul says something like this, it's an area where the enemy has his greatest success, especially this right here. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. The Amplified Classic says, uh, do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, associations, corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. You're going to take on the personification of who you're giving yourself over to. What you're spending your time watching and listening to is going to influence you and you cannot help it. That's the way you're designed. I said that last week. You can't do nothing about the way you're made. You're made. Faith or belief comes by what you hear. It don't matter if you don't want to believe it, you hear it down in your spirit, you're going to begin to believe it at some, at some level. And I see, it, I see it working with me. I see where I get off from God, and I realize it's because I've given myself over to something. I've given myself over to evil communications or twisted. The word communication back then really meant your lifestyle. But it also means today, it means the things that you're getting in your house over wires, the things that you've got in your back pocket. Whatever you're, whatever you're hearing and looking at is what you're feeding your spirit. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, out of the abundance of that food, you talk. And if you put abundantly in garbage, you're going to talk and garbage is going to happen in your life. If you put good things in there, then you're going to talk and good things are going to happen in your life. That's the way you're created. I love Otis told me a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, he said when he's at home and the news comes on. He said he can't get to the TV fast enough to turn the channel and get it off. Amen. That's why when I hear those actors' voice, I can't stand it. I, let me, Judge Judy said something one time that changed my life. She said she had a lie detector back here. <laughs> and I watched her do it. I, I probably watched every episode of Judge Judy that ever was for the first 30 years of it. And I watched her. She could detect a lie like nobody's business. And just by watching that little Jewish lady, I figured out how to use my lie detector when people are talking and when I'm hearing things. And it works. The Bible refers to it as the spirit of truth. It dwells in you. But you have to learn how to discern. You have to learn. And pretty soon you'll get to that place where the ring of truth I'm speaking of, of reptilian stuff and people that ain't really people. Talking about this today, I knew I was. Susan and I were getting, getting ready and she was combing my hair or something. And I, let me see how this thing popped up. It was a 14-year-old news story from CBS Morning News, the CBS Morning Show. And it was a guy telling about it, and it was a mistress, a, an accused, an, an alleged mistress of a former U.S. senator who is now deceased, who I used to love and found out he was a very evil man, found out that later on. And she was on there denying that she was his mistress. And as the guy was pointing to and talking, the guy that had the clip, 
he began to point to it. And he said, oh, he said, she's got these two lumps in her throat. And she did. And that wasn't real. I mean, she, she ought not have no Adam's apple. She was a <laughs> woman. But she had two of them, and they were big, and they were moving. And then it said, look at her eyes. And they did a close-up of her eyes, and her eyes were slits going up and down. Now, I would not have brought that up. There's so much stuff out there. That was on TikTok, by the way. There's so much stuff out there that it's just BS, and it's deception, a lot of deception. So what did I do? I set out this morning. It took me five minutes to find the original clip from CBS News. Now, what they didn't count on back then, the people that were not that far off, you can't see the eyes like that. But our technology has come a long way. When I had her on my phone this morning, all I had to do was that, and her eye took up my whole phone. And that pupil was going up and down. Now, if you want, if you want to send, send, message me, and I'll send it to you if you don't believe me. Those things are being revealed right now. There is evil in this world, and we're dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis. And every time they open their mouths, they are lying. We've been lied to about medicine. We've been lied to about energy. We've been lied to about food. We've been lied to about history. Dear goodness, you want a good place to start? Go on YouTube to a channel called John, J-O-N, Levi, L-E-V-I. That's the way he pronounces it, John Levi. And every Sunday morning, I've been watching him for about five years, he questions the histor historical narrative that we've been taught in schools. And he will have you wake up to some things. You got you to gotta be willing. You can't look at it and say, well, I didn't want the football game on. You got to prayerfully go into these things, wanting to know you've got to ask, seek, and knock. Amen. Say, I want to know, Lord. But go to a good place to begin because he'll begin you questioning the lies that we have been told. And you'll begin to see. There are things I can tell you about Albany, Georgia, that me and Susie have found by riding around here that go back centuries that nobody ever talks about. But that Susie finds, spots them faster than I do. It's, we're in an exciting time, y'all. Everything is being revealed. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. What does that mean? Wake to the ability you have to say no to drugs and don't do drugs. No, it says awake to your relationship with God, which was given to you by Jesus. And then you won't miss the mark. When you wake to righteousness, you're not going to sin. First John says it is impossible for us to sin. How about that? You don't ever hear that in the evangelical church, do you? But it's in my Bible, and I bet it's in yours. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest, and it's not quickened unless it die. Same thing with us. We have to die to ourselves and the other to rise to the new life that God has for us. And that means with all of our old thoughts, our ways, our tradition, the tradition of man causes the Word of God to be of none effect. If you will guard your eye gate and your ear gate. Now, I say eye gate and ear gate because that sounds weird. I heard that 40 years ago, and it sounded weird, but I remembered it. And now I see it. A gate I control. I can either open the gate or I can shut the gate. Whatever you allow in there, and Jesus, look in Matthew 12 and look what Jesus says about the abundance or the, the, the deposit, some um, interpretation, some translation say of the deposit that a man puts in. I like that. In, in the Amplified Classic, the verse 32 says, What do I gain if merely from the human point of view I fought with wild beasts at Ephesus? If the dead are not raised at all, let us eat, drink, and for tomorrow we will be dead. But do not be so deceived. Don't believe that. Don't believe just that so many lies are going on right now about we just cease to exist at the end of this existence. No, you're eternal beings. You were in God from the foundation of the world. You will be forever. Yes. Isn't that a good thought? Yes. Amen. 
The nature of deception, once again, is you don't know you're being deceived. The first big step you must wake up to is that the one that is deceiving, the deceiver is the one that does nothing but kill, steal, and destroy. He is evil, and he does not like you. In fact, he hates you, and he takes pleasure in seeing you crying. He takes pleasure in seeing you injured and hurt. He takes pleasure when you have relational situations in your family, when you're going through a divorce. God hates divorce. The devil loves divorce because divorce goes on through generations. It doesn't just end with the husband and wife. God, if you... This, this stuff, are y'all getting this? Am I making good sense? Am I making myself clear? No matter how nice the people's clothes are, it doesn't matter if you might have voted for them and put them in the office. I'm going to tell you right now, mo the majority of the people who are in elected office, at least in Washington, D.C., are either completely controlled by the enemy or they are some of the enemy's personal people, which I mean people that way, you know, with slips going the other way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Y'all might think this is crazy, but you're going to see it's not. Uh, I'm not talking anything that is extra biblical right now. Every, all of these things Jesus talked about. There are people, though, you have to, this is the step you have to see. There are people that want to see you destroyed. They tire not at trying to destroy you. Agenda 30 is they want to get the world population down to 500 million. That means over 6, 7 billion people have to be done away with by then. And they even tell in their books how they're going to do it, right in our face, amen. But there are those evil people, and then there are the ones who have been compromised, and I believe all they got to do is hit their knee and cry out to God, and they'll be in good shape. Amen. Yep. I, I, I saw myself like that. I knew I had an ability to lead people. The proof is I've done it for 28 years now, and there's been a lot of people that have come to God because of this ministry. I know that I do. I used to do the same thing in the kingdom of dark, darkness. I used to lead people into dope lead people into alcohol all the time. I, I, mean, I was the first to, to try these things out, and then I wanted other people to be where I was. That's the nature of evil. Evil loves company to go along with it, you know. How I discovered one of the main tools of this truth movement, this awakening, I heard, I don't watch it anymore, it's the mainstream media. That's one of the main tools that the enemy is using. And the way I discovered the treasure trove of revelation that is in TikTok, I was already finding it in other places, but never like what I'm seeing in TikTok, was I was hearing bits and pieces from the, I don't listen to any mainstream media, but this stuff spills over into the um, social world, social media world. And all they were talking about was stay off of TikTok, delete the app, don't have it. The mainstream media does not like Stan. They wish Stan was dead. They don't want me to prosper. They don't want me to be healthy. I ignored what they said with that thing that went around. I did the exact opposite of what they said when that thing was going around. And me and Susie were fine. Y'all watched us. Not affected one bit. I don't play his lion games. And when he said through them, through the ones that are on this payroll, over and over, get away from it. And I saw Christian ditching it, getting it off of their app. Not won't run, I can't talk them into it. There is a, a fellow that lives up north that I've been speaking to. He has his doctorate in theology, and he will not even talk to me about TikTok. He's that afraid of it. The very thing that God is using to reveal truth. I, I, it, it's just amazing. It, 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 those things, just, they leak over and you hear them and then you end up. Anyway, that's all I got. Y'all get anything out of this? You can protect yourself. It's the main thing from deception. You've got that lie detector built in. It's the Spirit of God. 
truth rings. It has a resonation with you. It has the ring of truth when you hear something. And that has to do with what God has already put inside you that was in him from the beginning and probably in you from the beginning. And when you hear truth, and then, like I did this morning, before, I wouldn't have brought that up today, but I immediately found the original CBS um, thing. What, what somebody said the other day was that their, our technology now has surpassed their ability to deceive. Right now, you can get a, a Nikon 950 or 1000, and it has like an 83 zoom on it on the 900, and you can see that we've been lied to about a lot of stuff. Now, I ain't going to get into nothing right now, but you can, you, it reveals the lies of the enemy. Our technology, thank God that God's in the middle of these things. Our technology has, has overtaken their ability to deceive us. I will be deceived no more. Now, I say that with all faith. And I'm sure he's going to tempt me, and I'm sure as I say that right now, I have areas of deception that are going on in my life. But if they're revealed, I'm quick to change. Mid-stride, I'll change. God bless y'all. I hope you did get something out of this. All right, y'all share it. I think we had, last week I had 21 shares on Facebook. Thank y'all. God bless you. If this means something to you, please share it. This, this, message needs to get out there. I, let me tell you where I am with God. <clears throat> I have habits <clears throat> that I've talked about with y'all for many years. Well, when I turn on the shower, I immediately begin to pray in the Spirit. That's just automatic. Has been for 35 years, something like that. When I, had to, when I come over here in the week, I have things that I say and prayers that I pray. And every time as I'm walking out of this room, I say, Lord, fill this room, fill this house. And this past week when I was over here, I, it was week before last, actually, I think. Could have been the week before that. And I was walking out, and I started to say, and I said, do what you want to. <laughs> and it felt so right. Do what you want to, Lord. Do what you want to. What's that? Not my will. Not my will be done. You get those things on the inside of it, and you begin to see God's moving in so many areas of your life. They, they, out of the abundance of the heart, you begin to hear yourself say things you don't know where they came from. I hope y'all did get something out of this. Thank y'all for watching at home. I did, it just thrills me. When we got that message from Russia, wherever it was, that was a big deal to me. God bless y'all.